So yeah. I feel like the, the story of this movie is kind of long overdue to, to have been made into a documentary. It's, it's so fascinating, so many um, great stories here. Doug, David, how did you guys uh, decide to do this together? <laughs> David, you can kick it off. Well, I'll, I'll kick it off. You know, I, I, I want, I, um, Jeff Rowe approached me and he's uh, from VH1 and NBC and he's a dear friend and he said, I want to do a documentary on, on the on the rock camp. And I think, it, you know, and so, um, you know, I, I, I want to do it because how many times you go to see a film and you see the trailer and you you see the trailer and then all of a sudden you go watch a film and you're disappointed. Well, right. the, the problem I have with rock camp is I can do a commercial for 30 seconds, a minute, I can never really tell the story until you know you have to, I have to get this movie made so that we could tell the story of the magic that once you walk in the doors of rock and roll fantasy camp, it's magic and um, it's all these pe musicians collaborating together to to uplift these uh, the, the the folks that are coming and and uh, everyone leaves their ego in the door and and basically we're we're here to make these campers' dreams come true and we could have done. I would say a thousand stories, Teddy, of <laughs> every one. I yeah. mean, you know, Pistol Story is amazing. Scott's Keller story is amazing. But, you know, there, there, there are thousands of these campers whose stories are amazing. It just, you know, this is what Doug picked. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I think what I loved the most was that Doug says, you know, David, stay out of the kitchen and let me bake the cake. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love that. You can cook, David. I have to admit, when you put a rock camp together, that's as big a deal as any film. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> well, but I, listen, I was a fan from day one. I walked into our lawyer's office, and I saw uh, Twenty Feet from Stardom, and I love Darlene Love. I love Mary Clayton, and I know these people, hmm. and I just love that film. And uh, you know, we had an editor, and then I said to the lawyer, "I said, this is the guy I want. Give me the guy who edited this." And I kept asking him. And then one day he picked up the phone because I, I was getting frustrated and he introduced me to Doug and what an honor to, to work with Doug. And, and um, yeah, it was great. Yeah, uh, shout out to the whole team. I mean, Jeff Rowe, of course, great, amazing producer who held this together and kept us going and, you know, sifting through the mountains of footage that the, the camps collected over years. I mean, we, we, this is one of those documentaries and this happens on docs where we had every format from old VHS with the label falling off, <laughs> all the way up to, you know, Alexa's and, 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 you know, a great DP that I know came in and shot with like the, the, the suspension rig. And he looked like a cyborg walking around with the giant camera. So we went all the way from, you know, ancient video to the latest technology on this thing and everywhere in between, including phones. We have flip phone video. We had, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I literally, I think we used every format known to man on this movie, and it was- uh, You know, Doug, it was, it's so funny, because one of the campers, I, I couldn't find the camera from this old footage, and I asked one of the campers, and he sent us a camera. I just sent yeah. it back to him the other day, um, <laughs> because I, we couldn't find the camera that could show you the film, yeah. Yeah, uh, wow. 90 terabytes. Yep. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Finding an old foot pedal or something. It's like- anybody That's a lot around anywhere it's it's uh yeah it, it, it really was fun because it brought back memories for me of because i've shot on every one of those formats from from the time i was a kid and you know this was my music growing up and a lot of the people in the film testify to this too we're all in the same age bracket and i grew up listening to stuff that teddy and Vinny and tony were playing on and and you know we were we were like riding down the road like dangerously banging our heads behind our station mm -hmm. wagons and mom loaned us you know uh listening listen to the stereo and to get back into this again really took me home you know i'm from detroit detroit's a major right. rock town you know oh yeah um, and some of the you know the songs that these guys are a part of are part of our fabric of america you know this is such an important uh important phase of my life when i was growing up and before i came to california and discovered you know uh, all the other all the other things and got into jazz a little bit and everything else but the the truth is this is, I think this is the kind of thing that stitches us together. That's why I liked the idea of rock camp so much because everybody gets together and everybody bonds. You know, there's, there's this, everybody can play something, can join in. Some people like, like, uh, you know, the, the two Scots here are, are ace musicians. They're just, they're killer musicians, but you could, you come in sort of kind of know your instrument. I think, um, mm -hmm. I forget, I think Teddy, you said it is some of them can play, some of them 
kind of can't play. You know, <laughs> That's you, true. It's garage band. There's always that kid from down the block who couldn't quite handle the, the, the <laughs> rhythm, but he, he came along and you sort of brought him along with it. And right. cool. We always give those people to Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> I have the I have the most patience, yeah. I guess you know. He's, yeah, he's got the most patience. He's good. <laughs> but this 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 movie actually comes the closest as uh, as far as relating how how it really is in real life. I mean, you really have to actually take a a, a camp to really experience it. But this movie comes as close as as you're going to get to actually being there. It's yeah, really yeah. It's Mark Burnett did the it's series. It, you know, Kenny's right. It, Mark Burnett did the series. That didn't really represent the camp. Yeah, yeah. They did a series. It's hard to do a series. You know, Doug. You know, really did an amazing job. Yeah, this. You know, he Doug came is... to a lot of camps, and he got to see what the, he got to feel it. Yeah. Well, David, you you uh, you should mention that this has been four years or more in the making because five. Oh, yeah. five, yeah, because you know there were different versions of it. That <laughs> yeah, were, sure it was. Coming, yeah, right. Trying to come together, and it just didn't really capture the essence of it. I was right. always concerned about that because they shot so much footage. How are they going to be able to put oh. that all together in a way that really conveys everything that Rock right. and Roll Fantasy Camp is about and have it make sense and have it, you know, because there is, there's a lot that goes on in those four days. A you lot. People <laughs> that come in and they're completely in their shell. Some of them have been before, so they're like seeing family and friends. It's like, cool. Then you have people the first time and they're they're anxious and they don't know what's going on. And you you put them together with four or five other strangers. And by the end <laughs> of it, they feel so empowered. And they're playing with Roger Daltrey, with, with Paul Stanley, with these people. And it's like, it's it's really hard to convey how that happens and what goes yeah. on. And I think that Doug, I said this before, he did a fantastic job in and getting that all together to show what rock and roll fantasy camp is about. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, it really is a, um, a microcosm of what goes on with a band. Yeah. You, you, there are ups and downs, there are emotions, there's struggles, there's egos, you know, which uh, people come in and they have the expectations. We have to somehow as counselors pull that all together and have it be a great experience and and then rock rock the club at the end of it all. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. And I always stand back at the end of the camp and like, it happened. We actually did it, and we did it again, and we've done it. I I don't know how many camps I've done now, twelve or thirteen, and every time it always comes together. Right, and Doug, mm -hmm. to capture that is pretty miraculous. I have to say. Yeah. yeah. Well, a quick shout out to our whole team. I mean, my, my co-director, editor, producer, Renee Barron, and some wonderful editors who sifted through this mountain of footage. Um, <laughs> you know, Renee, oh, man. Work, and then uh, my, my dear friend, Josh Bayer, who's worked with me on, on several films, um, and, and uh, Miles Wilkerson, who hopefully is out there watching tonight. So many, and many of these folks also shot uh, at the at the camp, I mean, we had camera people coming in. We shot with everything, just like the camp did. We had we had little Canon cameras. We had giant rigs. We had all this stuff. We had GoPros. I think Tony, mm -hmm. at one point, we may have put a GoPro on your base. I forget. You know, we did all kinds <laughs> of things. so much. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah, and and you guys were amazing because you know we were just kind of flies on the wall, and we got to see this compressed like let's figure this band out, and we got to see it you know sort of sweat through it a little bit. It was really fun yeah. because. You know the the little quiet aside, like I don't know if this is gonna work out. That that kind of stuff really is charming because you guys made it work. You know, and and mm -hmm. you're so seasoned at taking a group of people and making them work together. That that, that was part of the family thing about Rock Camp. I just loved watching you guys work. It, it, it is amazing. Yeah. It, you know how 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 the counselors and Vinny and Teddy and Tony and all of them, Rudy Sarzo, how they how they're able to take the magic of that camp from day one and to take these people to day, to day four, to that final night and, um, and have the patience for them. And uh, you know, it really is, it's, it's incredible. Well, the payoff is from at, at the end of the camp, how happy everybody is. That's right. They're That's so right. happy. They performed and they got through playing with the, <clears throat> the big artists and then they got playing with us and, uh, so to see that happiness, that's what gets us through and, and seeing people, you know, being looking forward to come in rehearsal every day. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it's just uh, a really cool, 
cool. Seems like a lifetime in four days. Yeah. Oh, man. We can't wait till Sunday. (laughs) (laughs) Doing it as a counselor must be another level up. Us shooting it, we were just watching. You guys are doing it. And that was really something. I I have to say, though, my my favorite camper of all time J.J. Raw Power, always. J.J. Raw Power. Oh, yeah. That's our hero right there, J.J. <laughs> and his dad. And his dad. I'll, of course. I'll, I'll tell you just, just, just one thing to add to what you guys were saying. You know, as a camper who came, remember the first time I was in a band. Excuse me, Jackson, stay quiet. Um, I was in a band that uh, had a guy. I think it was, his name was Brent. You'll probably remember Brent. Right? Brett or maybe. Anyway, he had been well, like. Burnt. Oh, Burnt. Well, burnt. it wasn't burned. I know burnt pretty oh. well. No, this is a, Brent, Brent uh, Woods. Yeah, the bassist Brent. who had been to like 15 camps. Uh, no, he's not oh, a camper. Oh, Beyond. Beyond? No, no he's, not, no, he's not, not a camper. Beyond. He's about a camper, right? Yeah, from Texas. He was our bassist. Oh, um, okay. That's fine. Anyway, he had been to 12 camps, and, and my son and I, Lachlan, came in, and, and we introduced to everyone, and he said he was on his 12th camp, and He's like, you won't see me much because I kind of feel like everyone here is family. So I'm out hanging out with all my friends. And he wanted to visit all the former counselors that he had had and things. And my oh, son, that's, like, that's Garrison. Okay. Garrison is like, yeah. I think that's it. Ben, okay, Garrison. Got it. Yeah. ben Garrison. Ben. His father was, right. was Ben. Yeah. Yeah. yeah ben, ben Garrison. Ben. You got it. So Ben told us that, and we thought he was just kind of crazy because who would go to 12 camps and who feels like family at rock and roll fantasy camp but literally when we left we're like we're coming back and it might be 12 times because <laughs> um, everyone made us feel so comfortable it was it was awesome as a camper to have and Vinny, by the way i'll give a special shout out to you Woo. my my son who is um pretty shy at the time you know i remember the first time he sort of really got comfortable was when Vinny was walking back from the lunch line and he looks at us and he goes oh man it's a drag they ran out of pizza <laughs> and my son looks at me like, oh no, they ran out of pizza. And then he cracks this big smile and then looks at a full stack of pizza. And, uh, Come on, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it, was just, it, it just made it fun that way, you know? So he, he got a big smile on his face. And, and then, you know. I, was, I, I did too when I played bass and I there was Tony Franklin. You did? You smiled big when you played with Tony Franklin too. Yeah. yeah there he yeah. is. There he is right Hi, there. Hi, JJ. <laughs> are you Tony Franklin? Are you rocking? Yeah. Yeah, you always rocking. I'll tell you, J- JJ Raw Power is now playing at the School of Rock with oh, yeah. regular oh, kids, yeah. Yeah. and he's playing Metallica, and actually laying down the bass lines for things like Enter Sandman, and he's wow, he's hanging with all the normal kids. It's not a special needs sort of thing. He's come a long way, and so Tony, thank you for the inspiration. Yeah. Wow. Do, was the, you think right. that the rock, you think that the rock camp was instrumental in his confidence and his growth in that, other than your love and encouragement? No, a hundred percent. I mean, it it was it was magic for him. Uh, and on the way home from camp after that event, he was talking. If if normally he talks at thirty three RPM, he was talking at forty five RPM because <laughs> he was so excited. Like I did it. I met my goal. I'm going to be a singer now. <laughs> like all these sorts of things. Um, That's wonderful. It's That's been cool, such man. a great outlet for him, and it's made you know made him some new friends. And and now I play bass and keyboard at School of Rock. Yeah, you're playing bass <laughs> and keyboard at School of Rock, and you're doing great, aren't you? And my bass is sounding sick. Yeah, and your bass is sounding sick. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so it's been yeah, it's been transformative for for both Jackson and for Lachlan. And again, shout out yeah. to Vinny for for really helping shape that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I enjoyed you gotta, it. Totally. You got to tell Lachlan's story because if he's there, he's probably back in school. But uh, you know that you know after we did this the other day with Rob Halford, that was really to me that was unbelievable. We, uh, you know, we called on Lachlan to talk and uh, tell the story, Dad, because it's really it comes to show you the power of music. You know, how many people have seen this film and have said to me, David, I get the rock stars and I love them. I get it. He says, but to show the power of music. How it changes people's lives and in and, and the camp. You have to share that story. Okay, yeah, look, sure. So Lachlan is now a sophomore in college, and he first went to camp at age 13 or 12, right around there. And he was super shy, didn't have a lot of interest, was just thinking about playing the drums and was pretty rudimentary. And again, Vinny gave him a couple lessons. We actually had Phil Susan was our first counselor. Mm-hmm. came back again and it was Vinny when you were counseling us the second time we were there 
he just came out of his shell like this kind of sort of wild man and then from there he's like hey dad you know can we get to go jump out of an airplane that was his next thing he wanted to do so <laughs> I was like really my kind of shy timid kid and he's like yeah I think I can do it we did that uh he then wanted to be a singer so he's like I'm tired of being behind the drums I think it would be really push me to get out of my comfort zone to be a singer so he did that and then comes college essays and when you're writing college essays to get into college, you need a good story about, you know, facing into your fears, learning stuff. So he wrote about his first time at camp, overcoming his fears to be on stage. And he wrote this college essay that got him into Yale. Wow. Um, wow. It was pretty good college, right? And, um, and so, cool. I, you know, who knows whether he would have got in without having had that experience. And, and then amidst it all, he also decided, hey, I want to write a book. Uh, and so he authored a book that was professionally published. He recently released an album that he did all the music himself. He taught, I sound like a super proud dad gloating now. And wow. And I don't mean to. It's actually just really cool to see how he's just out there in the world living and he's trying new stuff. He came and out he, of his shell. That's what I love. Take, and he's, he, he's, he's the one who says that was from Rock Camp. That was yeah, because he I said that, that he was shy and he came out of his shell. And, you know, and Teddy, you've had so, such great stories of. Uh, yeah, know, I mean, but, I, I've had, I've had people who, who didn't play an instrument at all. They yeah. came because they wanted like to meet me, the- like, they, like me. I'm, I'm sorry? No, no, go on, Teddy. Oh, uh, they, they had the, uh, uh, they came because they wanted to meet the, um, the, uh, the, the, the star, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the, the rock star that was that week, let's uh, say a uh, Steven Tyler or Roger Dole, whoever's the main, the main, um, attraction was it was steven tyler and so i had a a girl i had a, i had a couple girls in my band they always give me the girls i guess and who <laughs> wow i don't really play an instrument i'm i'm just here to meet steven tyler i go well i got it well you don't play an instrument at all she goes no not really I mean, you, you paid all this money you don't want to don't you play something no, i don't know how to play anything what well, can you sing no but so what i would do is i would find something that they kind of enjoyed like uh, whether it be a keyboard or bass and i would mark it actually with colors like colored pens and okay <laughs> when we hit this note you you hit that color you know and by sunday they're actually playing or they're singing or whatever and um, wow. you know that's what you you know you do you make that you make what you have you, you make it work for you so there are, and then you'll get the, then you'll get the musicians where that come in and uh, like a lead guitar player who's shredding and you go, oh. okay, well, I don't have to worry about that guy, you know? Yeah. Well, can, I, can I ask about that? I was actually really curious about how you, <clears throat> how you form the bands because someone who needs a lot of help, you know, getting started versus someone who's really sophisticated and, and, and already got their shops. How do you give them equal sort of um, value for like your time and your experience to, to make sure that someone like Pistol, for instance, is still, you know, learning something uh, simultaneously with the other people? Well, I'll, I'll let David, David. You well, should. you know, originally the way I did it was I, I, I used to have the guys sit at, uh, and gals and yeah. <laughs> they, would, they would sit at a table right. and um, they would, you know, I would tell these musicians to prepare songs and you're going to audition. And it was, um, it was, it was a way they got up on stage and, um, and they, you know, a couple of guys, the girls would get up there and play a song along with them. So all right now was Simon Kirk. And that was the way I started camp. And my, the philosophy of doing that was to, to get them, first of all, to jam with a rock star right away. So I would see people running off stage and say, they're calling their husband. I got to jam with, with, you know, with Simon Kirk from Bad Company. But what happened was it, it, it added a lot of fear and uh, people got scared. And you know, that, that's honestly, as a, as a uh, business study, the, the one issue we do have at Rock Camp, and hopefully that's why I'm so excited about this film, is that people are scared to come. I mean, uh, you know, I, I had Jeff Beck and, and, and Jeff right. Beck is probably the greatest guitar player in the world. And I can't tell you how much money I lost that weekend, but uh, <laughs> you know, people called up you know, they they would sign up. I'm going to jam with Jeff Beck, and then a week before, they call up and say, um, "My husband can't come. He's got a business meeting." Uh, another one, mother wife would call me up and say, "My husband's mother died of cancer," and uh, I say, "Well, send me the obituary." Oh, well, I can't find it. You know, and and my my, my guitar has cancer, and my drums have cancer. I mean, they throw that word cancer around like, you know, and I get it. By the way, I get it. 
because my dear friend invited me to go to Mar uh, go to Michael Jordan fantasy camp. And I said, I'm not going to Michael Jordan fantasy camp. I'm not going to go one-on-one -on -one with Michael Jordan or be with three guys on a three-on-three -on -three and look like an idiot and try to. So <laughs> I get the fear factor. And that's the biggest issue we have. So what I'm excited about the film is that people are, are, are not afraid, well, hopefully will not be afraid to come. People are picking up instruments now because these the counselors at camp and the rock stars are really welcoming and you know mm -hmm. and so so what we would change that process around ask them to send in tapes and 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 we you know we basically interviewed them and uh but you never know that's that's been an issue we're trying to put the right band together um so but i just uh, let when, me when uh, jump in um no, they, jump in, please. Uh, they do a really good job the administration does a really good job of putting the bands together on the front end people will do a simple questionnaire so that they can say which level they're at and they'll match mix and match and sometimes you know people often like to put that they're better than they are and so they'll get into they'll get into camp and that was like, me okay. Tony. that was me <laughs> <laughs> exactly and then, and then and what so, about we mix genres you know pistol says i'm an r&b guy and we put him in right. the metal band too what was your, <laughs> from pistol what was your experience of that because that was completely you're he's a fantastic drummer by the way yeah uh, but he was completely out of his comfort zone what was your experience in that pistol well just let you guys know i pay five dollars per compliment so keep them coming <laughs> okay <laughs> no but you know what i was like a fish out of water um because the ideal is is that i'm walking into a genre that sure i've played you know, jam with other bands some rock tunes and things like that but in terms of sitting down in a situation where i'm actually playing with rock and heavy metal players that has never happened so i knew that i was in for a learning experience um so on the questionnaire that you brought up they said how long you've been playing i said a year now i've been playing for a long time but i didn't want to you know oversell myself or anything like that because i knew that i had a lot to learn uh, and once I got there, it was it was absolutely beautiful because everyone was so welcoming. And I think they could tell that I was absolutely nervous. I sat in on a master class with Vinny. He teased me a little bit, um, but I learned a lot from him. And, and I thought that that was great. And uh, Teddy almost got me beat up uh, <laughs> because I actually, you know, I, I got to tell the story. Uh, Teddy was working, at, working out a Motown song um, with Paul Stanley. Well, Paul wasn't there, but the band was rehearsing. And so I came in the room just to listen. These guys sounded great. I knew the song, so I started singing. And then, um, then, and then Teddy said, hey, I want you to sing tonight. And I said, well, you want to talk to Paul? I said, no, nah, just, just come up on stage. And so Paul's <laughs> on stage starting to sing. And I started coming up singing in the background. And Paul looked at me like he wanted to choke me. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Teddy said I can come sing background with you. <laughs> but it, it, just, it felt so good um, because it was. I just felt so welcome. Um, and Tammy, unbelievable drummer. Um, and I'm, I'm on the mindset that I can learn from anyone. And I did. Tammy taught me some double bass stuff. Vinny taught me some stuff. And I've listened to Vinny for years. And the idea of being able to be in the same room for Vinny with Vinny is one thing. And then also to be able to talk with him and ask him uh, questions. Uh, Tony was the same way. Just It was just incredible for me. Um, Scott, I was, you, know, you can tell I was an R&B and jazz guy because I, I came in there. I'm like, hey, guys, you know, we're playing kind of loud. You know, but and, and Scott said, look, man, this is rock and roll. Get used to it. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I got to change my mindset. But it was it's absolutely too, long, you're too old. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it, I funny, tell you, that, that's how it goes. Yeah, <laughs> it's it absolutely. If you get loud, you love to speak more. That's what you do. You <laughs> too loud. Yeah. Okay, let's listen to let's listen to Pistol. But it absolutely rejuvenated my. Uh, because I was I was just kind of stuck in a rut. I mean, I knew why I got into music, but I've been playing for so long, and then you just forget why you do it. But going to camp rejuvenated rejuvenated me, and I just felt so good. I said, okay, this is what I want to do. I mean, I have my day job in network engineering, but um, I love. It made me just fall back in love with being a drummer, and it's rather than going through the motions. It was just right. absolutely beautiful. Just such a wonderful experience, and. Um, the day after the uh, um, the day after we had finished camp, I felt so sad for a whole week. My wife's like, "What's wrong?" I'm like, "I miss the guys. I miss being there. I mean, because it was like family. Four days of eating and sleeping and playing music with everybody. You become so close to them, 
And then for that to end, I mean, it, it was sad. I mean, it's like, it was a morning. I was, I was basically going through a morning period, you know, just, right. it was awful. It's yeah. like that for us too, after the thing yeah. ends, you know, yeah. oh, wow. On that <clears throat> Sunday night after, what happened? after we were done on, on that last song and you start to say goodbye to everybody, it's like, oh man, this is hard. Yeah. yeah. You know? oh, no. No, I, I have to say, I remember we interviewing a, a, a young woman who came to camp and she came as my guest. She, uh, she, she had breast cancer and she's uh, recovering from Susan Coleman Foundation. And she came to the meatloaf camp and, uh, and you know, her story was basically that uh, she always wanted to be a singer and she comes to camp and um, she then leaves camp and writes a book called Rocking in the Pink. And she right. tells the story right. of her experience at Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. So I turned to her when she was being interviewed. And I said, by the way, I want to ask you a quick question. Did you, when you left camp, we, we did you, get, you had to go back to your day job. How was it? And she said, David, I was a lawyer and I swore I was never going to be a lawyer again. <laughs> and I quit my job and I learned from these rock stars to be passionate and to go with my dream. And I learned so much at that camp that I decided my dream was I was either going to be a, a record a record. She made an album right. and then I'm going to be a writer. And she became the number one fiction writer. She wrote 14 novels all over Amazon. And wow. she changed her name to, um, to she because she didn't want the book about cancer coming out. But she said from, the, from what I learned from these musicians that they are they're passionate. You know, I'm working on a book now. And, you know, it's basically, hey, mom, I could have been a rock star, but you maybe go to Harvard. Or in, in, in Scott's case, yeah. maybe Notre Dame. But these are people who come to the camp who, you know, mm. our musicians are, are they, they're, they've been in bands. And then they, these guys went for their dreams. These ladies, these girls went for their dreams, you know, like Lita Ford and, um, you know, so many of, of, of other counselors. And these other people wanted to go for it, but their parents said, no, you got to go out and get a real job. And, uh, right. and it's right. been burning in them. It's burning in them. To, to, to really come to camp and play music and people over 40, 50 who are now picking up guitars. So all different levels are, are coming to camp. That part of that, for, I mean, that was the part I enjoy so much about documentary in general, but especially this one is we got to go home with you guys, you know, Scott and Scott, we, we got to visit you guys. And I, I, I had so much fun just getting the other side of rock camp, which is the everyday life. You know, the thing David's talking about is like, what's what's your what's your real life look like and what your families look like and what your routine is and yet there's rock and roll kind of running all through that or music running all through that i remember hanging out in pistol's garage late at night and i remember he said i gotta put i gotta put the uh the, the skins i gotta put the silencers on because the neighbors are going to complain if i play my drums this late <laughs> and uh yeah it was also good for the crew because i think we would have all he would have blown us all out of the door if we had if we had the had the full drums going but I mean, Pistol, you built your <clears throat> in the garage for us that night, and and we're we're there like, wow, this is amazing. We're filming you like we're putting all the pieces together, and I'm thinking this is dedication. This is and you're doing this normally just just to, to go and rock yeah. out. You feel like well, that's why I said it. In the next life, I'm playing flute, so I don't have to worry about any of that hardware. <laughs> hey, that hey is... Pistol, hey Pistol. Yes, sir. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> It's right behind me. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what's funny? Hey, when my camera went 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 black, that's where I had to go. I had to go take care of some business. <laughs> I, like, I saw you wow, on the floor. Look, they were signing a record seen, deal. What a backdrop that is. Wow. <laughs> hey, and it's unisex, too. Even people in wheelchairs can go in there, too. So it's for everybody. Everybody. Okay. There you go. Nice I'm glad you weren't wearing it. Uh, uh, we're thing. backstage with Scott Pistol Crockett. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I gotta mention you and, and Scott, your your collection behind you. When we filmed that, I was like, I can't believe the stuff you have, like the toys and goodies you have. And it was kind of a contest between you and Tammy, because Tammy has the world's yeah. collection. And, yeah, I mean, what, and I kept what, what was fun is I didn't, I, you know, it just kind of builds up, right? And so when you filmed it, I was like, wow, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> 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 I kind of didn't realize what I had created. And it was fun to read some of the uh some of the reviews on the movie because people picked up different things and, and yeah. you know they would talk about some of us as characters and so you know the, once someone mentioned how this one dude has heavy metal stuff all over his house even in his kitchen <laughs> like this is actually my bar area and my kitchen's different but you know I just thought the visual of like 
my kitchen being covered with CDs that are signed by Vinny and Tony and Zigzag. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Can you buy your pictures of JT Wapow on yeah. there? Yeah, <laughs> and, and you still love them, right, Dad? You still? I do. I love them more than anything. Oh, All right, oh. can, you, can you say goodbye to everybody here? Because we're going to get you to bed. I'll stay here, but Jack's still not upstairs. Bed, yeah. <laughs> but this is your cue <laughs> to say goodbye, Jax. So say goodbye to everyone. Say rock and roll, whatever you want to say. I want to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'll, rock and roll i'll tell the audience too we had some of jj raw power's chicken soup and it was phenomenal <laughs> it was yeah. amazing, that amazing night we made chicken soup uh -oh. uh, a basis uh -oh. so, okay you gotta do first time obedience alex i want to say one other thing too and is that oh, you, know, you ask about the band so while you know one of the bands you know might have a you know might have a, a player that's not as good a drummer What's so cool about camp and the councils are they're such great friends that they'll go to Vinny and they'll say, hey, Vinny, can you come in and, and work with my drummer for a half hour and, 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 you know, and I'll work with your bass players. And that camaraderie and that, 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 we've, we've put, that they, they do with these people, they can't believe it, that how, how just amazing our councils are and um, how they're just there to help people. And, and what, I'm, what I'm hoping that the film, if you ask me what my dream is with the film, is that it, whether you're a musician or you wanna write a book or you wanna record an album or you created an app or you have an idea, there's no age that you shouldn't stop to take your dream. And you can, you know, these people are doing it by music, but everyone should be able to live their, live their dream, have passion, you know, that, that to me, in these master classes, um, we're doing these classes and every night, you see the passion that artists and musicians have. And um, you, if you could take that back with you and you want to be an artist, fine. You want to do this, whatever it is, don't quit. Don't have fear. Yeah, That's I, right. I mean, I'm going to vouch for it. I saw so many bonds being made between young players and older players and, and that, that remarkable young woman who's in there who, who can just sing with the best of them. She's up there with Joe Perry and, and she's just belting it out. And a few times Joe looks over and goes, wow. I mean, what, what am I up against here? Buddy Guy had the same reaction, I think, when she was in that camp. Um, and, and, you know, you've got Blake Meinhardt, who, who went through many camps and grew up at the camp and became an incredible player, you know, and, and brought himself out as well in a different way. Uh, and he's at Kent State now, and he's like making, making music and, and recording albums, doing all kinds of stuff. So that's the effect that you guys have. Um, just watching you guys teach was such a joy. Because, you know, I'm a teacher as well. And shout out to all my SCA students who might be attending tonight and all the fellow faculty at USC. Um, teaching is really special. And I think you guys are the perfect embodiment of giving back. You know, you have, you've had amazing adventures and you've, you've been out on the road and you've done all these things, but then you're willing to give it back. And that's that spirit of that. That's kind of what the movie's about too, is, is like, where's your family? Where's, where's the, the grand family of rock and roll? And I think that's, that's kind of where you find it. I thought this was a story, I couldn't believe the story hadn't really been told before because this is like the hidden story of rock and roll, you know, the garage mm -hmm. band that reinvented as a, as a thing that we can, we can all go to. You know, yeah, seems... I, I don't know this for a fact, but I can only imagine that there, the, the movie probably would have been eight hours long if they didn't edit it. <laughs> I mean, because there's, there's so many, there's so many stories of going, so how, the, how are you going to get all this stuff, you know, how are you going to make this happen? And, and it, they, they did. But I mean, there literally is hundreds and hundreds of stories. What happens in those little rehearsal rooms is pretty magical. And, you know, to be able to capture that and show it uh, on, on film is great. I mean, I mean, Doug didn't even get to show the story, Teddy, of, of, of when, when um, you know, Teddy asked a, a, a lady came to camp and, and he said to her, you know, um, she couldn't sing. She wouldn't sing with the band. And so Teddy, Teddy says to her, he says, um, w w you know, why did you sign up to camp? You don't sing. She says, well, I sing in the shower. I can right. really sing in the shower. Right. Right. So uh, Teddy sends the crew guy to <laughs> go by the shower curtain to hang in the, in the studio. <laughs> and, and he puts her behind the studio, behind the shower curtain, and she's singing her ass off. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. The it's funny my, stuff, I got to tell you, the yeah. funny stuff. That happens in camp. There's oh, sorry, some Dave. funny stuff that happens in camp. Yeah. Hey, I just want to say that it was a very therapeutic for me because I was 
riddled with self-doubt in my plane because uh, for whatever reason, I just, my uh, um, confidence before I went to camp was, you know, pretty down. Um, but after coming to camp and then seeing the other people, communicating with them, I just, I honestly, I felt the love. I felt the unity. I felt the uh, camaraderie. Um, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't a competition. It was a cooperation. And that's, that's the best way I could say it right there. It's just that I learned right. so much from all the campers and, and, and even from the, uh, the coaches as well. Absolutely beautiful. And if, if nothing else, um, it helped me redefine my, my confidence because I, I really had lost it in my plane. I, I, there's a lot of doubt. I'm thinking, well, geez, that guy's better than me. I don't think like that. I, now I do what I do and try to be the best at it. And that's one of the things that I took away from camp right. is do what you do and just try to be the best at it. Right. Yeah, Pistol right. is very, he's very, uh, he's not telling you like that he, he's a bad motherfucker you know? <laughs> he's not it he, he, when, uh, when he first came to camp and i would have never known that he was nervous because i would walk through some of the uh through some of the band uh, through, through some of the band rehearsal rooms i'd stick my head in to see what the competition was and one day i stuck my head and i see pistol playing drums i was, I was like and i go back to my my band i'm like oh man <laughs> that guy. I wish I had that guy in my band. <laughs> Probably one of my yeah. favorite moments in the movie is when Paul Stanley looks right at you and says, "Oh yeah, I know exactly what Paul was talking about." And, yeah. and your emotional reaction to that because yeah, that hit me hard. That hit me hard. I, even yeah. now, it's hard for me to talk about it because um, I will. For, Paul will forget more things than I will ever know or ever learn. And for him to make a, a single me out and say it, make a comment like that, meant a lot for, for me because I grew up listening to Buddy Miles. Um, I really didn't study Buddy Miles, but I listened to him with Jimi Hendrix. And so obviously some of that must have uh, rubbed off and I didn't know it. And the fact that Paul said that to me just blew me away. Um, I got my money's worth at that point right there. I could have just left camp and been happy at that point. <laughs> because... pistol, 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 you see this? Okay. He gave it to Paul. To show <laughs> them. <laughs> them. You know, they're kids. <laughs> Documentary here, guys. <laughs> So, no, you know what, and, and, and it's so true that the, the, the big stars, they come and they they really, they get a great kick out of it. I think I think you see that too, that, and it's the funniest thing is that um, how many of these rockers tell me all these campers years, they're in the front row. And I said, you know why they're in the front row? Because they jam with you on stage. They can't go sit 10 rows back. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I want to say guys, that, uh, I want to say that, uh, you know, we we get very close with the with the campus through all this because it is it's you, they they have to feel that we, we can trust them, they trust us, and then they become friends for life. There's many many campers, and I see them when I'm traveling yeah. and touring. Yeah. And say hi, <laughs> and it's like you know they really are friends and family, and it's it's pretty special. And uh, you know, I'm not wishing to make this sound like an infomercial, but it's it it gets very personal and very close to 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 these people they're friends i mean yeah. my first yeah, camp was 2013 or so i'm still yeah. in touch and see see friends from that campus from that everybody yeah. all the people on here scott and uh scott and scott you yeah. know we're, we're we're friends and it's it's beautiful it's very very powerful yeah. and uh Oh, there's so much that that if it goes on DVD, is there going to be a bunch of uh, of backstories and extra footage in there? Oh, That'll take a bit of a, yeah. This is yeah, yeah, the blooper reel. The, the, no, the the X-rated <laughs> stuff. No, um, I, I have to say that one. Of, you know, because I know this is mainly filmmakers and and watching this tonight. And one of the things I have to really credit Doug is. Um, you know, the hardest thing to other uh, this film was, I, you know, the first cut I sent to somebody and they wrote back infomercial. I wrote to Billy Joel's agent, infomercial. I mean, that's what I would get. And it, well, the way Doug transferred it into making it a real documentary, that, you know, people, you know, people always, because it really is, it's a, it's a love fest for all of us, you know. And, and um, but to turn it into a documentary, that that was brilliant filmmaking. Well, I'll tell you, absolutely. Dave, watch oh. it student by the way and and i know we got a bunch of our sca students and and uh maybe some other students out there watching it's all about character and story it's it's really you know the reason that we followed people home we went home with with pistol we went home with with scott and his family and with tammy and everybody else 
is because that's that's where the heart of it really is you know is who are you in your everyday life and then who are you at rock camp and that transformation is what we want to cap mm-hmm. so the first thing we did was just sort of budget like oh, i'm gonna fly to and this was crazy because i went from south by southwest in austin texas flew directly to i believe it flew to pittsburgh then new jersey then new york uh, and we did all these stories on the East Coast. And I remember we did our Orange County Day where we went and saw Scott. And I know we went down and saw Pistol, I think, on the same day. Uh, and we were just filming like crazy to catch all of these moments at home. And it was exhausting. I'm like, this amazing team we had, this great crew, you know, with, with Renee and Josh and everybody, um, was, was really, really there to catch those moments. And I'm just so pleased that you guys opened your doors because that's in documentary. That's what you need is access. And, you know, at camp, the counselors, everybody was so sharing and so and fun and, and we'd catch moments that were only only if you were hanging out in the room, would you ever catch that moment. But going home, we saw so much humanity. It was just so nice. You know, the thing to remember, which is very important, is that, yeah, we're rock stars, but we're humans just like everybody else, right. as are the headliners. People get that fear, but they're just human beings. We all go to the bathroom. We all breathe the same air and have the same struggles in life. I mean, you know, it's we're, we're just human beings like everybody. Southwest is. Airlines check-in moment. That was perfect. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A, I want A. <laughs> hey. hey, Alex, can I ask? By, by, by the way, the film goes um, February 16. It's on Apple. It's on Amazon. Um, it's on Fandango. It really goes VOD and cool. it'll be everywhere. And it's pre-sold now on Apple. And uh, I hope that everyone who is uh, who watched the film tonight can go on um, online and, and maybe go to Apple and, and just write a comment in what they thought of it. That could really help us. Tweet it, twink it, whatever you want to do. But, and, you know, social media is so important. And, uh, you know, that's one thing that we, we're not lacking. But, you know, it's the young people today. And I'm hoping young people will take this film and, and um and inspire them that they can go live their dreams yeah well Kit, let me uh, uh sneak in a couple of questions from the audience just to uh make sure that i i can um answer a few of these uh there is some questions about the the fee for participation like what is it what uh what does it cost but also uh do you guys ever do any kind of um scholarships uh, for instance there's someone who is a social worker who works with uh, children in foster care um, in fact, David, have a look at that one later in case you want to. Uh, sure. Well, let me tell you. Yes, there is a fee. Camp starts at three nine nine nine, four thousand, five thousand for the four days plus hotel. But I have to tell you that you know we started taking doing payment plans. We started doing whatever it takes. I, I would give it away for free. I, you know, I've given away spots and every camp. I would have a soldier. I always wanted a soldier. I would give away to charity. Um, you know, for me, it's I really enjoy um seeing seeing anybody get their chances so we love doing the charity and um and, and it's yes we're there to we're there to help and and want to contribute so um absolutely yeah, absolutely yeah hey david just just one thing on that as a camper you know it is a it is a high price kind of thing to do but one thing i found interesting is you know in fact pistol and i had someone in our band he was our bassist at the uh megadeth camp and the guy had literally slept on a Greyhound for two days to come out and get to camp and he was crashing on someone's floor. He was like the, you know, the true rock and roll lifestyle before you make it, you know? <laughs> and um, I would say, I don't know if he paid full price or not, but, but, you know, he had paid something for it, obviously. And it was so special for him. I mean, I'm not saying the higher the price, the more special it is, but, you know, the value you get out of it is so profound, I think. And when you leave that, that Sunday and you can wake up that Monday morning. Um, it, the, it's weird, the price matters going in, but it almost doesn't matter going out. I would just say that's my experience of it. I'm not trying to sell for you or anything, David, but it's just, well, it's just Scott, the way it plays, you know? You know, Scott, Scott's very modest, but you know, he, and, 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 and Doug didn't want to show the film, but um, you know, we, and I think Doug didn't want to make this another film like uh, Behind the Music, you know, all those Behind the Music is the same. Band goes up to make a lot of money, then band loses all their money, they do drugs, and the band goes up again. I think what's great about this film is it goes all the way up. But the whole backstory, there's a backstory with this camp where 
this is hard for me. It's, it's a hard business, you know, it's, it's, and I'm running two camps, you know, one camp for many years where, where um, people are uh, having the greatest time of their lives and I'm suffering financially. And, you know, I just didn't want to go on the road anymore. And I got married again. And, and it was Scott Keller who about four or five years ago, who wrote me this email. And, um, and I saw that he works at this company called McKinsey and I called him up right away. I said, Scott, can you help me? Can I, can I get together with you and ask you some advice? And, and Scott, you know, really turned my company around and he basically, you know, he, he got the folks at McKinsey to come in the, the great consulting company and, and really saved my company. Cause this is hard. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times I wanted to close the doors and, um, and, and Scott basically, you know, his, he sends all these fancy schmancy people in and, they finally turned to me and said, David, here's the problem. You're making $10, you're spending 12, spend nine and keep a dollar. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was the greatest advice he gave me and he really saved the company and he saved the camps from going on because, you know, it's hard to, it was hard to, to even think of closing it because you're answering these people's dreams every day, every day. David, my, my husband doesn't have road rage anymore. I'm recording this record. I'm doing this. I, I cannot thank you. The, these rock the camp, these councils are amazing. I got to be with Tony Franklin for four days. I can't thank you enough. And, and you know, you're getting thanked. And then all of a sudden you're running as a business. It was really hard. And so kudos to Scott. And, my wife told you about my road rage, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah but Alex, <laughs> I, you know, that's the real story. And, and uh, that's, that's part of it. But thank God Scott saved me. Well, they, they, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Scott. Well, I was going to say just one other thing just on that, though, that I thought was really cool about Doug when you came over and Renee was with you and Miles and uh, and I'm sure you have the same experience, Pistol. There was no scripting or even, it was just like, go about your day to day and we're going to film it. And, and my family's just like, how do we, how do, we do that with how the movie? How do you do that? You know? right. <laughs> uh, we but we did. And, and oh. so, so what was really, like when I watch it, it feels, it feels really honest. Like it just feels like, oh wait, that's, that's what we do. And that's how we are. And I'm sure that's how Pistol is. And I'm sure that's yeah. how Tommy is. Um, and I, I didn't necessarily expect that out of a documentary maker, to be perfectly honest. And I was super refreshed by that. Um, so that was, I just want to mention that as part of the experience. That was really it, it was great. great as you guys rolled with it. And we said, you guys go play beach football. Really? Can we go out there with you? And we took all like at great risk. We took our cameras onto the Sandy beach and we were running around <laughs> watching Jackson catching passes and, and, and shooting a little slow-mo with the sun setting. It's yeah, like, I'll, I'll I'll remember, the, I won that game. that game. We won that game, yeah. Yeah, and really, we yeah. party big time. <laughs> we, did, we did party big time. Yeah, because we got yeah. that quarterback. I remember all about that. Yep, we nailed it, man. So, yeah. yeah. We, we, we were going to make an epic sports doc out of that beach football game that you guys <laughs> played out there. There and, you go. And, and just things like, you know, uh, go, going with pistol to your to your church, you know, and seeing seeing that morning prep, oh, yeah. the donuts. Yeah. Those are the things we look for, those little details that are, this is life and this all adds up to something, you know. And it, it, yeah. it everybody, this background and this, this kind of urge and desire to do things. Um, so I, I just really appreciate that everybody opened up and shared with us. It was so fun to shoot with you guys. So yeah, the crew um, helped. I mean, it was, it was amazing with Miles and Renee. Um, it, it just felt uh, so comfortable. Uh, it, it, it really felt like it was just Hi. part of the family. Fucking um, wow. <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs> here, so it's about time. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it just, um, it was comforting. I just felt like uh, that nothing was contrived. It just, I just felt natural to be around them. So I didn't feel pressure that I had to act or be something that I wasn't. Um, so what you saw, even the, you know, when I became emotional talking to my daughters about, you know, my opportunity to play with Lenny, that stuff was real. And where it was um, therapeutic for me is that those are things that I probably been wanting to say, but I never had the opportunity to say. So right. in saying that, not only for getting it out of me, but saying it in front of my family was huge for me because I, you know, I, I kind of just closed that part of my life off about, you know, the missed opportunities. But with Renee and Miles there and, and everyone filming, it's like, it was like a session. It was like a counseling session for me. And I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I mean, I, I just love that we were there to see those moments because that, that's what happens when you just sort of, you just watch, you know, you listen for, for doc filmmakers that are out there, just listen, you know, listen to the people as they go through things. Um, plus with, with you pistol, but we had to get that one shot of you 
walking walking into the venue, you know, down the <laughs> and that led to having an awesome meal with you. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're gigs sometimes, and uh, you know that that's the magic of Doc. It's real. It's not like you, you flip a switch at the end of a day and all the characters are gone because they're just on a page. This is real stuff, and and I know all you guys as friends. And that's, that's just wonderful because, I, and, and this multiply that by a hundred with all the other films I've done. And there's people that I know from places I would never get to know. Like I would not, I would not know about this unless we were making these kinds of films. I'm, I'm really glad I met David and Jeff and, and that uh, Donaldson Califf contacted me and we, we got all together with it. But um, I would have, I would have never met Tony and Vinny and Zit and Teddy this way. And I would have never hung out for a minute with Paul Stanley or talked to uh, you know uh, uh, Lou Graham and backstage I had, a, I had a chance to talk to him and say, Lou Graham's lead singer foreigner. And we used to ski at our like little knuckle of a, of a ski resort in Detroit. And all they would do would play foreigner nonstop on the speakers as we were skiing. And I told him that, I said, oh, I love Detroit, man. That was so fun. It was so good. <laughs> and just to, to make that connection and say that this all converges, you know, all that stuff I listened to. And, and I finally get to talk to the people who did that for me back when I was a kid. Uh, it's really, really special. So, yeah, it's just, it, it's it, there's nothing like it. It's really, really great. Well, being at counseling, actually, uh, at, at camp, um, afforded me the opportunity of meeting um, people that I would never have the opportunity to meet. I mean, we're talking from the counselors uh, to the other campers like myself. So it's absolutely beautiful. Um, these are, these people are now part of my life. I stay in contact with a lot of them. I write uh, Matt Starr, the other drummer, uh, quite often. Uh, just I stay in contact with everybody. I mean, so it's like it, it's that wasn't the last night wasn't the end. It was the beginning of lasting, right. loving friendships. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my, my Christmas card list is very long these days. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I want to bring over someone, uh, a recent graduate who had a, a good question. I'm going to temporarily bring her over as a panelist so she can actually just ask it live. Okay. And um, let me put this back on gallery view. Let's see. Thanks, everybody, for hanging in there for the Q&A. This is fun. There she Hi, is. Anna. There she is. Hello, Anna. Hey, can you, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. Hey, Anna. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you, everybody. It's so good to be talking hey, to you. This is awesome. Um, I love the documentary. I'm a huge music fan. This is all I talk about. This is my life. Um, <laughs> and I'm a writer, so I write about music. So this is just amazing. Thank you so much for your amazing work. And it was just like a joy to watch this. It was just incredible. Um, and I just, I just want to borrow Tony's amazing words, um, which I think really describe the documentary. You said it really captured the essence of the music. And I completely agree as a music fan I was just like I felt like I was there and it was just incredible and as a writer who wants to write about music and who's currently writing a project about music I was just wondering if I could ask you guys for advice like how do you think writers can capture the essence of the music and music driven stories for film and tv just if you guys have any advice for us I'd love to hear it when you when Thank you say so writer are you talking about a songwriter or or actual book writer that's a great question. Um, I, I wasn't clear. Sorry, uh, a screenwriter for film and TV. Oh, screenwriter. Yes. Okay. Uh, you well, you, that, should, you should talk to Doug then about that. Well, I'll tell you. You know, <laughs> as as somebody yeah. who doesn't work with a script, the way we do it is hang out with the people. You know, get in yeah. bed, mm. go go and live it. And and the the wonder of it is the honesty you'll get. And it takes about a, about twenty minutes. You know, with these guys, I walk in the room and it's like, hey, how's it going? And and <laughs> Soon, we just melt into the walls and you just hear stuff and you hear stories and you hear advice. I mean, uh, one of my favorite scenes is when, when Tony talks about, you know, no, no, the notes, the notes want to want to, to lead the song. It's like, that's life advice that goes way past music. It's, it's the same thing in film. I mean, I, I saw Tony say that and I actually tell my students sometimes about that story and I say, this is also true in film, you know. Don't don't overplay the notes. You, you've got to you've got to actually let it flow and and be honest with what you're doing and just let right. it let it let it find its voice. And and I think if you just embed yourself with musicians, like like go on tour with somebody, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I know, uh, for instance, like Phoebe. Bridget I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> well, yeah, that yeah. would be amazing. I would love that. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I, you know, we're working on another film. I can't say much about it, but it's about the early days of Rolling Stone and and about one of their greatest writers. Oh. Um, and That's so awesome. You know, I know who I'm talking about. Uh, and and some of the stories of how he found the truth about musicians. This film, by the way, we'll we'll be talking about this later. And I know Alex will we'll talk about bringing it to SCA. Um, but it's you know his method was just just kind of melt into the couch and be with the with the musician and and let just listen you know and the stories that will come and the honesty and and you'll get all the all the bittersweet greatness of it you know the good and the bad and the and the in between and the and and the joy and the the pain and the hardships it's it, it, you know you, all you gotta do is just turn on the microphone and and be there yeah, I, awesome. I have something to say uh, about it. You know, we, we learn about playing instruments and writing songs by studying other greats, songwriters. So, you know, there are so many scripts and, that, and, and great movies and, and documentaries. The scripts are available online these days. Study them. Get inside them. What is it that makes it special? You know, it's the same with songwriting. You just, what is it that made that song great? And so, and there's, you know, you have to learn all of that. Here's what I say about my philosophy of, of playing music is you learn everything about it, everything you can, all the technical stuff, all the stuff, and then you forget it all and you play from the heart. Right, so, you feel you it. Know, you know, you've you got to learn all this stuff. You absorb yourself in whatever it is you want mm -hmm. to learn about, be it screenwriting, be it playing music, be it songwriting, whatever it is. Learn everything you can. And there are so many amazing resources available at your fingertips these days. And then yeah. find what's in your heart to, to, that's uniquely you and find the way to express that. That's Awesome. I love that. Thank you so much, you guys. And congrats on the documentary once again. Thank you. And, and by the way, is it about Lester Bangs? I'm just throwing it out there. No, no. Uh, I'd love, I, there, there, I think there's been another doc about Lester Bangs. This is, uh, this is uh, a, a, a famed, but, but less known than the really famous Rolling Stone writers. I, I can tell all in just a few months. It's going to be really That's cool. awesome. I love that. Thank you so much, guys. It was great talking Thanks, to you. Anna. Bye, again. Anna. Good Bye. luck, Anna. Thank you. Um, uh, there's a question here about um, brands. Like, uh, oh, first of all, this this uh, this guest wanted to thank um, uh, thank Vinny's brother for his book, the updated realistic rock drum method, uh, since it got it started it got him started as a drummer. Um, so the question is, can you discuss what role music manufacturers like um, Gibson and Fender and others play a role in the camp? Is there any kind of sponsorship? Um, you know, in the beginning, I had sponsorship from them, and you know, not, never, never financial fun, uh, sponsorship. It was always they'll give me gear, and they'll give me gear. And the reason they give me gear is because they want these people to come and use the gear, use the guitars, and use the the keyboards, so that they'll go home and buy the stuff. Um, so I've had that in the past, um, but you know, I, I it was some were reliable, some weren't, were were not, were not reliable, but uh, but you know we'll take gear and uh, let people try it. But most people bring their own guitars and, um, and but this, these gear companies, they don't pay anything because, you know, they, they have all these artists on every YouTube, you know, using their gear. And again, man, music manufacturing business is, well, now it's doing very well, but, you know, Guitar Center just declared bankruptcy. So obviously, you know, they're, they're you know, they're, people are buying stuff from Amazon <clears throat> and, um, it's, it's not that healthy of a bit. It's, it's, a, it's a tough business to be in. Mm -hmm. Hey, Alex, I'll just throw a funny story in on that because the, on the gear front, you do get guys who bring a lot of their own gear and gals and things. But one funny moment for me was we had Nita Strauss came in. who's just an amazing guitarist, um, just phenomenal. And, and she came in and we asked her to show us, uh, we were playing, I can't remember what it was, doesn't matter, but um, just show us a lick because it was an Alice Cooper song and she's, part of Alice Cooper's live band anyway so she takes one of our guitars she puts it on and I go to take a photo of her and she's like no stop you know because she just had her new signature guitar came out and she didn't want to have you know her <laughs> right. playing a Gibson when she has her other ones there's those funny gear moments like that where you're just like oh okay I kind of see how the sponsorship works and how some of this 
Um, so it's it's kind of fun that way too, because some of the, they're such great musicians, they have their signature gear. And you know, if you're Paul Stanley, you have your signature shoes too, and your signature everything. And you get a little window into the marketing side of things and what that means. And it's cool that way. That's why you see tape over the name on the bass drum. That's know? right. Like if it's a DW, but somebody doesn't use DW, uh, put the God. tape okay, on there. there you, go. you know, with the customer, yeah. Because you, know? mm -hmm. you don't really want to mix the brands. You are supposed to believe in this company, and 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 you got a spon a sponsorship. You have to, uh, you know, be loyal, kind of. Hey, know, one man. thing that uh, along those lines, um, one thing that didn't get so much highlight in in the movie because it really wasn't practical was the q a sessions and the master classes that we had yeah. in camp and we share a lot of this stuff that finish and uh, it's very open people want to know stuff they want to know about the business side of things because you know half of half of playing music is playing music the rest of it is the psychology the business and and you know just dealing with with the rest of it and so that's another aspect of camp that is so incredibly valuable. And we love to share that stuff. You know, that stuff that, uh, that Vinnie's sharing right there. It's so simple, but, you know, putting a piece of tape on can help your, your company not be annoyed at you because right. you're playing somebody else's gear. But that might be all that's available. So you got to use it. Yeah, so, you got to use know, it. But that's, why you call, that's why it's called show business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think David, you got probably eight seasons worth of Q and A's that you could run as a weekly series at this oh, point. Yeah. Well, oh, you know, I'm doing these master classes every night, like we talked about earlier, and and the information flowing is just yeah. remarkable, yeah. really remarkable. How much people want to know, and and a, and a camp, you know, giving them information from you know concerts to gear to yeah, the information is incredible. What they what, what they get, we love, it. and I think we all love giving it to them. Yeah, well, they they normally uh, the the uh, Q and A's usually the uh, the master classes usually last about an hour, but the ones that we've been doing online, at least I know my yeah. my mine was like almost two hours long, and it was, people were like, "Hey, I got to go have dinner now." Oh, Jesus, I forgot it was you know. So you get into it with your with these people, and uh, you forget the time just flies. Mm. I think it. I think if this COVID the pandemic didn't happen, people wouldn't watch this stuff for so long. And you know, everybody's home. It's such a perfect time. Yeah. To to go into these master classes and go, okay, right. I'm home. I got nothing nothing going on, and right. really study them and listen to what everybody's saying. It's like well, it's a real time. it's a real feather in David's cap because he's gotten all all of rock star world. I mean, uh, every time I, I go to the site, there's somebody new. I'm like, wow, we got that guy. Wow. So yeah. he really has the, the, the creme de la creme of, of rock stars doing these camps. Mm -hmm. And to put a positive spin on it, those, those classes have been such a, an amazing aspect, a new avenue, which wouldn't have happened if it weren't for COVID and the yeah. lockdowns. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, you know, there's, there's opportunities. We as musicians, you always have to be creative, not just musically, but creative with your business and, and all that. And kudos to, to David and his team uh, for, for thinking of this. It's like, hey, it's become such a, a great, a great, aspect of of uh of rock camp so you know yeah. i'm always the optimist and thinking you know what what opportunity is in this and uh, well, yeah well i think that's going to be great for the film you know um you know releasing this film now um you know while people said uh, while people said you know you're, you're releasing this film now someone just i, I did this bob left this uh, podcast just now why now and i said you know why not? Because we finished it. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> why not? You know? um, I learned to, what was the line? Doug, Doug taught me a line the, the other day to all you filmmakers out there. When does a film end? When you run out of money. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, but, 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 uh, but is, I, I, I think career, we could go on forever. And that's the thing is behind my shoulder right here, there's a silver box with 60 terabytes of rock. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's just amazing. But it's amazing. I, I, wow. The point, I, the point I was saying is that this film coming out there in this time of the year and in, in, in the way that our country is, you know, we've we've gone through a lot this past year and, and, and we're going into a lot. And 
and I and I think this film is going to give is people are all telling me that they love the film now because it's giving them hope. It's giving them, um, you know, it's it, the timing for a film like this now couldn't be better. And you know, oh, we can't sell camps and things like that, but it, it, people are watching it and uh, and they're getting they're feeling good. It's a it's a it's a it's a feel good film, and I think it, I love the timing for it. And you know what's great. Well, you can do all these interviews on Zoom. So I was able to talk to London today. I talked to Italy today. And I got to stay in my, I got to sleep in my own bed tonight. <laughs> it's also people are watching it going back on, wow, look at that. There's 15 people in a room without masks. Yeah. And there's no social distancing crap and all these rules and regulations. You know, and this is what life was and hope to get back to that. Right. You know, because. Yeah, you know, I see some people on stage with a mask on playing, you know, yeah. seeing, I think, oh, great, what is that about, you know, you gonna get sick well, on stage. But, you wouldn't uh, want to play the flute if you, if you uh, have a mask on there, uh, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so people watch it and they go, wow, that's like the way it was. And hopefully we're going to get back to that. Yeah, you and, know? And Vinny, you're right. I mean, it was unintentional because when we made it, we didn't know COVID was coming. And we most yeah. that, that's what it. I was just going to say. We, yeah. we had no idea that that this film would be done when right right now when it's most needed. The yeah. world changed. Yeah, yeah, the world has absolutely changed. This is and uh, I have to shout out to my friend Mark DeCue, who just uh, he's an amazing guy. And by the way, a huge, huge metal and rock fan. Who, uh, who was always our, our most metal dude when we were going to, uh, to film school. <laughs> um, and Mark, Mark actually asked a question about, you know, what's the difference between a feel good doc and some of the ones with more conflict or darker things. And the, the truth is, you know, for me as a filmmaker, when I look at a subject and it's like, is this sub is the truth of this subject really uplifting? Then let's make an uplifting film about it. Um, you know, I, I didn't find the, the dark behind the scenes, you know, uh, scary version of Rock Camp. There, was, there wasn't one there. It was, it was amazing. I mean, everybody was so positive. And I think that it's important to highlight those things in some documentaries because you need things that make life worth living. And, and Rock Camp definitely makes life worth living. I mean, just the music and, and the vibe of people getting together. We're going to have that again. Right now, this is kind of our like tide over. Like we get to look at this and say, this is gonna be us again soon. And mm -hmm. maybe it just gives people that extra hope to keep playing, keep practicing, keep get, getting ready to be in the world again. And uh, you know, I'm proud if that has that effect and, and just lifts people's spirits. Yeah. And Doug, I gotta tell you, you know, the, the lady who's working on the advertising for the film. So the other day she's, um, she's creating all the, the assets for the film. And all of a sudden she, in the meeting, she pulls out her guitar. David, I bought a guitar this week. And, <laughs> and I want to. I want to be. Want to play, and I'm going to start playing. And I got it strung up. And I said, "Wow, Doug, you know, uh, uh, this lady like she never played guitar before. She sees the film <laughs> and she sees how much fun. And now she's going to start to play guitar. And uh, I set her up with lessons, and and um, it was great. There you go. I got a music heels in here, but I promise you, I won't play it. Nobody wants. <laughs> <laughs> well that that sounds like a, a really good note for us to uh call it a night on inspiring and of course hopefully uh everyone out there will share the film and continue to inspire others um but man you guys are just awesome i, I love that <laughs> such a great group of people together for this film um and doug as always uh you know your your work is is fantastic and it's we needed Kudos to Doug. Yeah. yeah, kudos to Doug. He he did a brilliant yeah. job. And and yeah. Jeff Rowe, the producer. I mean, Everybody. a lot of work. Amazing. A lot of work. I'll never work on another film again. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't believe that at all. I'm too old. <laughs> <laughs> no, Until TV's next here. year. Good question. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I thank you all. Everybody's here, and all the people watching, and and the many people who are a part of this film. It's it, it's a family thing. It's not one person. It's never one person. Uh, are amazing. And true, it's a team. You know, right. I, I explain that. You know, the one thing I'll say. Uh, you know, Alex to say that camp is a team, you know, and, and it's, 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 that's what makes it work. And, yeah. you know, it's like a, it's a machine and it's only going to, if one of the spikes doesn't work, it doesn't work, you know. Yeah. What's your, what's your, what's your motto, Dave, that you always tell us at camp? Okay. So this is so funny. I tell this <laughs> the motto, but I, I got, the motto is don't let the inmates run the asylum. <laughs> so Sunday morning, this past Sunday morning, 
my phone rings. It's Bill Parcells, the coach, the former, the great legendary right. coach. And I hadn't heard from him in 15 years. And he just called to say, hi, it's David, I miss you. I want to talk to you. And he's living up. And I said, coach, I use your quote every day. In, in the <laughs> inmates don't run the asylum. And he said, yeah, you, you can't let them run. You can't let those players do, you know. I, I use it for music. That's where I get it. Yes, that's where I get it. What, uh, no, Dave, the, 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 the motto I was, is that there's no band in, uh, what, no, there's no, no, there's no, no, no letter no. I in the word T. Yeah, see? Yeah, I see. Oh, I <laughs> that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> I love those <laughs> one liners. No, no letter I in the word T. That's it. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> that's great all right great it's been fun alex, yeah. see you guys. alex, alex thank you so much you're, you. you're always you're always bringing the best stuff here and uh this is such a great resource and a privilege and a pleasure doug yeah thank you yeah, guys nice job thank alex. you everybody when we can come everybody. back we'll come back live yeah and thank you all right. for changing my life appreciate it thank you so very much hey, you rock, pistol. <laughs> thank you, you now thank you, best care, you guys Scott. you guys bye-bye